Coach, I, I, I guess to that end, what's it been like and what was it like getting the announcement, college game day, coming to Lawrence for the first time for you and for the guys on the team getting that news? It was uh, Saturday evening, Travis Goff, athletic director, kind of reached out to me, said it was going, going to probably be announced in the next 30 minutes. And obviously he was very excited. And, uh, you know, it kind of, you know, it was uh, just a good feeling for the players, you know, you, you know, especially where this program has been and something like this has never happened here in Lawrence. So all those kind of things, as you see, it's like we've been able to stack a few things uh, together and, and, uh, have an opportunity to have something like this is is really special. And then, uh, as you know, then on Sunday mornings you start putting on the film and then you see how good TCU is and then you you get your mind off game day pretty quickly and on to the Horned Frogs. Yeah, you mentioned getting this point where a group that did experience so much losing for so long now is starting to get some good stuff. You guys are ranked for the first time since 2009 as a program, which is awesome for a lot of us that have been beating the drum to rank Kansas here as you guys have had so much success this season. How do you go about communicating that to this group of players? Like, hey, it's okay to be excited about all these things, but also to kind of focus back in, like you said. Yeah, it's an excellent question. You know, we talked a little bit last week when we weren't ranked. They said, okay, we're not ranked. So what would we have done if we were ranked? We talked about going back to work and making it happen. Well, you go back and make it happen, but do you want a, you want just a sliver of this thing and a, a fleeting moment of some recognition, or do you want to try to really, really add another chapter to something that, that could be pretty special and people really start talking about what kind of team this really is? And and uh, I've been, you know, so far, at least, you know, within what you can control these days, of course, with all the access to social media and things like that is in the, in the walls of this building, our guys have done an excellent job of, of focus, uh, continuing their preparation and the things that you ask of them and eliminating, you know, those type of distractions. And, you know, last week was a hard fought game, 14-11 you know, there's so there's plenty on film and a game of that low scoring and other opportunities that happen that you have to improve upon. And and I think that's also um, our guys have recognized that and it's grabbed their attention that we've got to we've got a lot to do yet. I think that's always something the outside world has a hard time with. I go back and I remember my my first game of my last year at Notre Dame. We went to Ireland and beat Navy by like 30 points and we were all on cloud nine and we come back and I don't know if I had gotten coached as hard as that in my entire <laughs> life as that next week because there was so much stuff to fix. But that goes back to the DNA of your team. And you guys talked a lot about how the timing of your hire last year made certain things difficult for you. But going into this year, when did you kind of look at this team and see something was different, that they might be capable of what we've seen so far? Oh, well, Mike, uh, I'd say I, I've kind of answered that question and that's been, you know, sim similar or like it in, in the fashion of, you know, we played better down the stretch after the Texas game. Okay. Not just the Texas win in overtime, but the next two weeks, one was TCU and the other was West Virginia, two close losses. But the way we went about it in practice was starting to take the necessary steps of, of becoming a better football team. Then the first day of spring football, it was night and day of uh, volume and energy of understanding schematics and what they're doing. And I thought the confidence was starting to rise. And then as we headed into fall camp, I knew we were better. I, I knew we, we knew we had better depth, but you just don't know, especially in today's portal, portal world, easy for me to say that uh, you, uh, you just don't know how everyone else is improving as well. You know, you, you kind of could look at this, you know, the preview magazines or, or, or what's on tape from the year before. And you got a really good idea how teams are going to be. Well, now you inject older players in many different spots. You just don't know how well everyone else is getting better around you. So as we approach that opener against Tennessee Tech, um, I said, yeah, I know we're better. Let's see how much. And uh, we played pretty, pretty really well that day. But it's probably then the, the trip out to Morgantown when we fell down 14-0 and, and, and found a way to come back and win on the road. Yeah, there's been a lot of variety already in the ways that you guys have won games that's been really impressive. You mentioned the portal, too. We've seen, I think, a lot of parity in college football so far this season. Do you attribute any of that to the portal? Do you think that 
for a program, like you said, where Kansas, you're trying to build something that hasn't been there in a while. Does the portal benefit, you know, you guys and other teams that are kind of like you more than it might benefit some of the blue bloods at the top? Um, yeah, I think so. Um, well, I don't know if it's going to help more because everyone can add depth. And, and I think for me is, you know, we've talked about it internally here. And I'll, I guess I'll say, share it with you is, you know, we're going to keep studying how old, you know, what is, you know, what's the roster like across the board or what's the roster like in the two deep now, you know, because of the portal, are you, are you injecting older players? So you're staying with high upperclassmen, junior seniors across the board in your two deep. And as you know, from playing size, speed, strength, but just overall, just maturity and life and how to watch film. There's a difference than, than it is when you just have younger players that are playing with a lot of talent. And, and I think that's helped us. Um, we did use the portal a lot. We were the youngest power five football team in the country last year. We're the third youngest overall, but at the same time, I've told people we have about three transfers starting. In that have transferred from last year. But where we're really getting a great contribution is that next layer. It might be multiple receivers or backs, our linebacker core, secondary. We're getting some of that from the use of that. I'm sure others across the country are doing the same. No, I, I think it's a great point. Depth is so often such a huge differentiator in college football as you're you're trying to Continue to build that momentum. Another place you've gotten great production, Jalen Daniels. Your quarterback's starting to get a lot of even Dark Horse Heisman talk now. Do you address that with him? You talked about with the whole team. We all know quarterback shoulders a different amount of the load. For better or for worse, we put more on their plate. So have you talked with Jalen about all the attention I'm sure he's getting? Yeah, and and uh, it's been a lot. And, he, and he's such a fine young man. And, if, you know, you, you see his personality. You see he's got a smile and, and, and charisma that lights up a, a room. And, and and that's who he is on a daily basis, and which is really neat. And we, we talked about it. And last week wasn't his best day on the field. And there could be a lot of, you know, and, and let's give Iowa State their credit in that. But we've talked about trying to balancing it. And, and again, um making sure he's honest with everyone beside, you know, we talk about the football part, uh, media requests, attention and all that, but, you know, we forget the academic component and other things that are going on in regular life as well. And we want to make sure, because as we know, for our program, it's really kind of, it's done on 180 in some of these things. And when you get hit with it, it, it it's going to be a little bit of a learning experience uh, for many of us. Coach, that turnaround You've been a part of winning at a lot of places at a lot of levels, Wisconsin, Whitewater, Buffalo. We, we've all seen that. For you, I, I'm always curious when coaches are able to come in and really inject life right away like this into a program. Do you have something that as soon as you step foot on a new campus, when you first got to Lawrence last year, that's like the first line item on the to-do list for you as far as what you think a program needs to start getting not back on the right track? You know, I, you know, this was such a unique situation. So listening and learning a little bit about um, not just myself, but our strength coach met with everyone. Obviously, the coordinators met with everyone on the side of the ball, either through through Zoom, FaceTime or call, because really the, the week I got the job, they were finishing finals and left town for three weeks. So mm -hmm. it was even more unique uh, than ever. Um but it was asking what get their input of what was needed. You know, we've you, you probably heard this, but you know, we have players in our program that had eight position coaches in their time. We have two, we had two uh, early enrollee quarterbacks that when I hired, we brought Jim Zabrowski, our quarterback coach, in, it was their fourth position coach of the semester, and. And, and as you know, as a guy who's played, what's that like? Okay, everybody's saying do it a little different. Who do I trust? What do I do? But, but along with those meetings, they talked about, you know, leadership within the program, leadership from the coaching staff, structure, discipline, accountability. And when they're, they were saying the right words and knowing some things that could help make this program get better and better sooner. And I, I want to make sure, Mike, I, I add this, that's not against the previous staff per se. Mm -hmm. It's also about part of the situation we're under with COVID 
and and routines and different things that were very much up in the air in that 2020 season that probably half a locker room really didn't know what normal was. And I think we've tried to raise our standards, tell them what the expectations are, but give them the consistency day in and day out. And as someone who had four position coaches in five years, uh, that, that consistency <laughs> goes a long way. There is no doubt. And coach, I mean, that's your staff too. You look up and down this staff that you've put together and you see a lot of the same schools, all the stops that you've been at. A lot of coaches, when they start to make the jump up, especially to power five jobs, you see them start to go in and recruit other people as far as coordinators. Why was consistency with a staff you've been with for so long such an important thing for you? Because I think they're they're a huge reason why I sit in the chair I do, and uh, if if I'm ready for it, I, they're ready for it, and they've earned that. And I and I think uh, trust and loyalty um, is is very important. It's a two way street to me, and and one of the things that um, that uh, that allows us to do is that I, I have great confidence when I walk out of my office here. Then you see the door behind me there that I know. I know what the, the, the group down the hall is about. I know who they are. I know how they're going to recruit, how they're going to treat young men, how they're going to mold them. And that makes it easier for me to, to look at some, the smaller details that I do and things that I want, I need to do to improve our program in other ways. And then, you know, and it works very well for us. I, I do agree with you that there are programs that, yeah, recruiting is extremely important. So they look for guys in different areas and, and uh, it's not always you get to bring everyone with you and do some things, but we tried to bring as many as we possibly could here to Lawrence. It's been really exciting to see, Coach, and that success, that continuity has all got you guys to this point. And I always wonder, because for so much of this early part of this season, and I think I heard you talking about this either with Joel Klatt or with Greg McElroy, but – Everyone talked about how so many traditional basketball schools had had success on the football field early in this season. I saw Mark Stoops, I think, rightly bristle at some of that talk before the season over at Kentucky. For you guys, is there a little bit of that, you know, walking around a, a little bit proud now because so many people do look at Kansas that way? And you guys are saying, no, you can play really good football here. This isn't just a basketball school. Um. Uh, first of all, I'd say, like I heard one of our players say, maybe it's after the West Virginia game or something about, yeah, it's going to be some about walking around campus next week. I don't think it has anything to do with basketball. It just has to do with um, winning football games and having pride and, and, you know, putting on your Kansas football shirt or your letter jacket when it gets cold and having pride and in, in saying it instead of kind of, you know, eh, I'm not sure I really want to talk about that. Um, you know, Coach Self was – just over here yesterday, we had a great chance to talk and things. And I, I always view it this way is, uh, you know, it's not a, it's, it's not a basketball versus football. I, I always tell people they're not on the schedule. Why am I going to worry about, you know, that's <laughs> not. And, and, and hopefully it's looked at that way by our fan base, our donors and everyone else in that. Uh, and, and for me, anytime I can have a, an opportunity to learn from coach self and, and his staff and, the great tradition and atmosphere that they have, why wouldn't we want to embrace that? No, it's it's so true. You're right. I love that line. They're not on the schedule. It's what we always do when we have quarterbacks matched up against each other going into these games. They never play a snap <laughs> against each other. Um, Coach, uh, all the noise surrounding the program, I, I don't want to dwell too long on this, but obviously – as you continue to have success and as jobs open up around college football, your name gets mentioned a lot. But for you, how do you just deal with that noise? It's always going to be there. So for you as someone who is so dedicated to this team and who's pouring so much into this team, how do you kind of do what you're asking your players to do as far as blocking out that stuff? Well, you know, the more of these you do, the more you get asked about, you know, a few times a day. Uh, but internally, we, you have a routine and uh, I keep saying back to your day, you, you know what it's like. You, you go, you get off the practice field. I do a couple of these, then we're in the film room. Then we have a staff meeting. It's uh, there's enough things in the day to go through to not to sit and get into a speculation game. That said, anyone that looks at, you know, my career or our careers together, together as a staff is we're not people that have jumped around. 
Um, we've gone through. We're extremely happy here in Lawrence. We came to Lawrence to build a program for consistency, um, not for a quick stop, and we expect to be here a long time. Well, Coach, part of that long time is, like we talked about at the beginning, game day this weekend. It's going to be an awesome atmosphere for you guys. You got any message for the fans, for, for Lawrence, Kansas, and the Kansas student body as you guys get ready for this weekend and the celebration of Kansas football? Well, we've had an opportunity now to sell it the last two, which we greatly appreciate, and they've been a big difference. And we're hopefully we'll get a third sellout here uh, by the end of the week, and hopefully they get out to game day and enjoy that and self and be proud and be loud. And uh, um, they're a big part of our success as well, and we greatly appreciate them. Well, Coach, it's been a ton of fun to watch you guys. You guys have been one of the real bright spots of the college football season, and I have no doubt that's going to continue as game day rolls into Lawrence and the rest of your guys' season keeps going here. So, Coach, thanks so much. Best of luck this weekend. We appreciate you giving us some time. Thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate it.